take a peek at that one. That game's on MichiganSportsRadio.com. Thanks to Brett Bream, uh, Beamers there. I haven't seen him in a long time. All right, this thing's going to wind down, and congratulations to the Granville Bulldogs. They're going to punch their ticket to round two. It's a matter of where they're going to go. Are they going to go to Kentwood? Are they going, who knows? Hey, go to MichiganSportsRadio.com for the end of that game. We'll be back to wrap this up. Roth, he'll turn, give, Terry, busting into the open field, there he goes, Jaden Terry, Granville, with an answer, and another Bulldog lead. Give the Scurrus fake, this in the backfield, evading a man, throws out of a tackle, incomplete, zeros across the scoreboard, Harper Woods have won the state championship, their first in school history, in unbelievable, thrilling fashion. We were built to drive, yeah. I think that we've all had Fake handoff, guy up the middle, big hole, bursting over the 40, to the 45, 50, angling right at the 40, 35, 30, racing to the 25, 20, outside the numbers, 10, 5, touchdown, Muskegon, Makai guy, 80 yards to the house. And welcome back, everyone, to game night and our drive to Detroit show. And boy, this is uh, this is an exciting one. Let's just get right into it. The head coach of the Granville Bulldogs is Eric Stiegel. He rejoined us. And of course, thanks as always, uh, coach, for joining us. And man, a win over Rockford on the road. We've heard so much from your guys this year about this idea of you know being on a mission and, and, and knowing how much has come into this season. What does it mean for the confidence? What does it mean for, for the program and for everything to be able to go on the road and beat Rockford in the way that you guys did last weekend? Well, for, you know, first off, again, thanks for having me and thanks for all you guys do. Um, I mean, I, I think it's a tremendous win for, you know, all our kids, the program, the community. Uh, you know, you, anytime you go and beat Rockford, especially at their place, it's a big game and a big one. And, and I, as I told our guys this morning, you know, when our season is done, and it's December and we're looking back, I go, you, we will, I'm sure, really look mm-hmm. back at this and really think about, you know, hey, wow, Granville has not done this in a long time. I don't think, I don't know that there's a single play on our team uh, that, that that was alive the last time, uh, you know, we beat uh, Rockford at the Ted. So, um, but I also said to them, like, that's something, you know, you're going to get patted on the back a lot. You know, as a, I got millions of text messages and calls from people, congratulating us and it, obviously a huge win but you know it's a quick turnaround for us you know Saturday morning we were in and getting ready to play Hudsonville but I mean from a you know from a program standpoint it, it's huge for us because they, you know they, I, I told our guys I will never I'm never gonna try to like cookie cut it or make it like it's been a giant hurdle for us um, and there have been many times that Rockford's ended our season at the Ted, uh, you know, preventing us from moving on, winning championships, whatever it is. So, you know, to do that, and it, it, it really in the fashion we did, you know, I think our, de- our defense was outstanding. Um, just played lights out. Best game, you know, maybe our best defensive performance in three, four years. Uh, just just played a, a heck of a game. And, you know, play complimentary football with offensive special teams. It, it was great to see our kids put that team together at that point of the season against a really good opponent against a rival in, in, in a you know winner go home setting yeah absolutely and you mentioned that defense and that's something I specifically wanted to talk about because you know when we went back and watched this you know watch this game and listen back to what happened it was so impressive the way that in a lot of ways the defense you know won this ball game D- did enough in that first half for the offense to be able to put up points in the second half and then sealed it down down the stretch as well of course against a Rockford team that was playing their best offense of the year the last couple of weeks so talk about it from that defensive perspective and, and you know how well that group was gelling what they have found and and how important it was to put together that sort of performance against Rockford on that side of the football well, I think any number one, you know, Coach Center has yeah, – it's like, you know, things have changed, but I, I think our guys are just getting better. I mean, the message hasn't changed what we need to do. But, I mean, he had an outstanding plan against Rockford. Uh, him and the defensive coaches had our kids just 
really, really ready, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally to play that game. I mean, we were, you know, that defense was very, very, um, they were intense. They were emotional, but they were also in control and had, you know, had, had a great focus. You know, sometimes when you get so amped up to play an opponent, you know, you let things slip, you know, and then a trick play happens or you bust a coverage or you misfit a run. And, you know, there's Isaac Poo for 80 yards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our guys play with, you know, just, you know, ba- basically, again, you know, how, how coach, you know, his, with his mentality of, you know, we're going to go out there and we're going to be really, really physical. We're going to attack you but we're going to be really smart. We're going to rely on our teammates. And, you know, the message really was make the plays that come to you. And if the, you know, if the play's not coming to you, you still have a job, but make the plays that come to you. Don't chase plays that aren't coming to you. And, uh, you know, he did a great job and our kids did a great job. Um, you know, and Rockford had, they've been scoring a lot of points. Um, you know, in the first, first game against us, I think they scored 37. Um, you know, they scored in the forties against Kentwood. Uh, I think they were in the forties against, you know, high thirties, forties against Caledonia and West Ottawa. So, you know, very good offense, multi-dimensional. And, uh, you know, for our kids to really go out and, you know, they scored the opening drive, but uh, they were, the defense was putting some tough spots in, the, in that first half. And, um, you know, they just put their foot in the ground and got the ball back to the offense. But, you know, no doubt the defense was the star of the game for us. And, uh, you know, to keep winning in November, we need, we need, we need that kind of play. You know, we, we need our guys to keep getting better on defense. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, you, you mentioned the offense, though. You know, first half, tight game back and forth. It was a three-point game at the half. And in that second half with the, the defense getting some stops, you saw the offense, you know, especially in the third quarter, able to find a bit of an edge, get a, get a couple of longer drives. Of course, Jaden Terry broke off a long run. What was kind of the key offensively? Because Rockford is probably the number one team that ha- has had an ability to slow your offense in, in years gone by. What was the difference in this one down the stretch in, in terms of finding that extra offensive groove and doing enough in the second half for longer drives and also busting the big plays? You know, the, the, the mentality that I wanted our kids to play with on offense um, – was, you know, Rockford is so unique in, in how they defend us. Um, and, and yes, in my time at Granville, they, they've been by far historically the best team that has defended us in my 11 years consistently. We've had other, you know, Hudsonville did a heck of a job this year. We'll get to that, I'm, I'm sure, mm-hmm. in a little bit. But, but you, know, you know, what Rockford does is so unique. And my, my you know, my message to our kids was, you know, we, hey, we need to, we, we need to get four yards. You know, we got, we get three yards for those are good plays for us because we get first, we had to play for first downs. And, and what I know is if we get first downs, that's just, we're going to be able to run more plays. And the big plays happen just because we're running more plays. You know, we're not out there. We're not out there trying necessarily to say, Hey, we want to get an 80 yard run this play. Of course we want that. But the goal is we got to get four, we got to get four, we got to get three and we got to get first down. So that was the mentality there it was just, just trying to be physical at the point of attack, be physical with their linebackers. You know, and we know with obviously Jay Terry, Easton Sedinsky, DJ, you know, Ethan at quarterback, you know, our, you know, Gibby, we have guys that, that are naturally just going to be able to make big plays when, when it, when it opens up to you. Again, be ready for it, but don't go out there hunting for it. So uh, we took care of all the enemy turnovers, and I, you know we, we might might have had one negative play, which is key. So we stayed ahead of the sticks. So we got to play the game and got to play the game like you know from our our vantage point of second and six is really good, second and seven is pretty good, third and four is good. You know we didn't have very many third and nines, um, so that that was that was what was really good for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned Rock for being. A physical game and you know a great win in that one let's transition now to uh the next step on the uh on the district revenge tour so to speak and another certainly physical tough football game with Hudsonville you know this is right. this is a team that probably hand you guys one of your toughest losses of the season you know so far uh tell us oh, yeah. a little bit about what the mindset is getting a second chance against what's obviously a very very good Eagles team that's on a nine game win streak now yeah, I mean, they are a really complete team. You know, you don't really look at them and go, oh, there's a weak point here or a weak point here. They're a complete team, um, playing really well on both sides of the ball on special teams. You know, their mindset, you know, to me, I think after we lost to Hudsonville the first time, it, it, not that it not that it hasn't been our mindset all year, but, you know, one of the things I really believe is that you've got to keep, you know, the, the work that we put in in weeks one, two, and three, 
some of it's starting to show up now. Hmm. It's starting to click in. And I think our guys really made a, an effort to, I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but just, just to really try to improve incrementally, but, you know, individuals, personnel units, uh, position groups, just really put the focus on improving our fundamentals. Uh, and, and, and it generally your execution is going to look a lot better when you're fundamentally sound. So I think, I think that we've tightened up some of those fundamentals on offense and defense. I think we're better there. Uh, and to me, that, to me, that's, what's going to be, you know, going to have to be the difference for us. It's not a, you know, it's not, we're not, we're not coming out with five wide receivers to go with these guys or anything like that. I mean, they have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do. I think we have a pretty good idea of what they're going to do. And it's the, it's the teams, you know, it's going to be the team that I think fundamentally executes the best and, and they have some tremendous players. I think, I, I think from a, from an offensive standpoint, they have the most complete, again, the most complete defense we've seen all year um, with great tacklers everywhere. I, I think especially like, the, you know, their front seven, eight, all their guys can run up there. They're all pretty big. Um, and they're physical. So again, you don't look at it and go, well, we can run at this guy. Um, like maybe some weeks you have that. So the execution is going to have to be at a high level, uh, you know, with, with, with our fundamentals and physicality really, really, really clicking. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the other thing that's interesting, you kind of mentioned your offense matching up against their defense and a well-known matchup there, but I, I think the X factor might be moving to the other side of the ball with, with how well your defense is now playing down the stretch. This is an offense that, yes. you know, they have they have a lot of playmakers out wide, but also they, they want to, you know, in particular be a physical team, couple different running backs, great offensive line. What are the challenges and what are the keys defensively to, to trying to slow down their offense a little bit more than what you guys were able to do the first time around? Yeah, I think you said it. I think they, they obviously – they are, they are a, I would almost call it like a wing T buck sweep. Like you're like Delaware wing T team out of the shotgun mm-hmm. playing with tight ends and wings and, you know, two backs uh, and a quarterback that can run tight ends that are physical and offensive line. That's very good. You know, I, they want to run the ball. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but the, you know, with that said, they have, some, they have some receivers that can really get down the field and make plays with the ball. Uh, their quarterback is a good runner and a good passer, so he can add into the run game um, and can add in, you know, he can make plays in the pass game. Um, you know, I, I think from a standpoint, you know, for us, I actually think we played a decent game on defense against them. We got to be better. I think our offense, you know, our offense, um, you know, turned the ball over to them and some poor things and, and wasn't able to get, was not able to move it in the, in the second half when the defense was getting stops. You know, I think, however, I think, you know, some differences, I think for us, you know, number one, Brett Becker has kind of taken more of a full-time defensive role for us. And he's been really good. Uh, you know, he's just, to me, just one of the best football players in the OK Red. Um, He's an undersized offensive lineman, but he is, he brings it, you know, at, at both at offense and defensive lines. You know, Easton Sedinsky's played well for us at corner. You know, we're using, we're probably using Jaden Terry a little more on defense now. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, a luxury for us is that, you know, we're kind of getting back to being healthy again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, you know, even a guy, you know, we, we're hoping to expect that even Garrett Rock, he's not wearing a club this week. That's our hope is that he's able to play with two hands. Um, you know, um, you know, obviously Jay Weiss coming back a couple of weeks ago is kind of it, that's kind of given us some more depth and obviously giving us back one of our big guys. But I think on defense we're able we're able to get more guys on the field in different personnel groups and kind of match up a little bit with what people want to do. Uh, and I, I think Coach Zenner has, has been great with that, uh, knowing knowing in, in different personnel groups who we want to get on the field and trying to create advantageous matchups for us when we're on defense. He's done a heck of a job with that, but I, I think more than anything, he's done a good job of getting our guys to be physical at the point of attack, taking on blocks and, you know, physical tackling. I think we got to tackle better than we did last game against Hudsonville. We got to be more physical up front and we got to defend the ball in the air. They did a great job of coming up with some balls where we're in position, but their, their guys went up and got it. And they had some good receivers but we got to go up and contest those a little bit better. Yeah, and and I I want to just kind of quickly wrap wrap up. You you touched a little bit on on your offense versus the the defense. I just kind of want to go back. So the last time you were able to get a couple of of quick strike plays for the most part, you know they they did a really solid job defensively. And you mentioned how 
you kind of both sides know what the look is going to be from each other. You know, where does that, you know, excite you potentially as as a play caller and a guy that runs such a unique system? When you, when you look at a game like that, do you, do you think you really have places that there's a lot of, you know, other little tweaks and things that you maybe you did learn from the first time into the second time offensively, you'll be able to work in, you know, against a team getting a rematch that's so good defensively. We're always we're always gonna you know look at that and and have some some tweaks, but they're also you know the same thing. They're gonna probably have some minor tweaks too to take away what we did do well. You know, to me, what they did their, their defensive line their defensive line was much better than our offensive line. Their edges were better than our running backs at a consistent level. You know, for us, we 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 have to be able to get the ball to third and three and get it. We have to be able to get three four yards consistently, and we were you know to their credit, I mean, they did a heck of a job. It wasn't like I mean we. No one really had done that to us this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, not Davison, not Rockford, not anybody else in the OK Red. Uh, th- those guys, those guys, those guys pl- did a tremendous job. And you know, Mason Decker, their their offense or their defensive coordinator, and you know, uh, Coach Sandy. I know he's involved. The defense did a great job. Uh, so, so yeah, we're gonna have you know, like we do, you know, every year because we played Hudsonville many times, just like we played Rockford many times. We're going to have some small tweaks and things uh, to, you know, to try to, to try to take advantage of things and put us in better, better scenarios. But at the end of the day, um, I, we have to do a better job sustaining blocks and we're going to do a better job finishing runs. Um, and I, I, you know, uh, and then th- that's to me, the, the difference in the game. I, I, you know, you don't go into a game like this going like, Oh, I think we score 45 points on these guys. I hope it happens, but they've been, they've been a pretty good defense to where we know we, we're going to have to play complimentary football get first downs, you know, score in the red zone uh, and play good defense. And, um, you know, and, and hopefully again, uh, you know, you know, make it a game like the Rockford game was where, you know, we, we can get a lead and play from in front because Hudsonville, if they're up on you late, they're a very good run team and they're smothering defense. So that'll be tough. So um, yeah, we'll have some tweaks, but we got to play better at what we and do what we do better. All right, sounds good. Well, we'll we'll promote then out to Hudsonville that you guys are running a four wide spread. So we'll make sure that that's what they're yep. prepping for. Yep. Um, yep. All right, Coach Eric Stegel, thank you again so much for your time and and good luck, of course, this weekend the rest of the way. And hopefully, we're right back here next week talking about uh, whoever's up next. All right, thanks a lot, Nate, and go dogs. All right, go dogs. Eric Stegel here on Game Night. It was founded based on the belief that the interests of our clients must always come first. We listen and understand your objectives before making a recommendation. We customize the portfolio of investments to fit your goals. It is our commitment to provide a strong line of communication. Our services include family wealth management, saving for retirement, and estate planning and trust services. Getting started is as easy as picking up the phone. After all, when everything is said and done, isn't it about time? It's the final game, folks. This one wins the series. Struck out with the cheap seats. Important things aren't worth compromising. At Farmers, we offer both quality insurance and great savings. Here, take mine. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Game Night is presented in part by Farmers Insurance, Bennett Center Agency. For all auto, home, specialty, life, and commercial insurance. See what a center can do for you. All right, welcome back uh, into the program. As always, thanks to, uh, to Coach Stiegel. And well, since we didn't get to it at the top, of course, follow on online <laughs> at MI Game Night and whatever. We've uh, we've been planning that segment for five years now <laughs> for this show for what's going to happen, and let alone winning a game in Rockford, right. which of course happened. And uh, we went we went right to Coach Steagle because I figured that's the guy to to go to right away with, mm-hmm. with that interview. Probably not us, and. Uh, so yeah, let, let's let's break down a little bit uh, of last week on both MGN and Michigan Sports Radio before we get into this week's games. And again, I apologize to to everyone that we are not going to have the Granville Hudsonville game. Our Hudsonville crew has it. There are there are pre-established rules that keep some sanity to what happens when these situations occur with Michigan Sports Radio broadcast teams. The precedent has. Precedent has been broken before, not necessarily on a playoff game with us in Hudsonville, though. Um, you know, last year we did the game at home. Um, I tried behind the scenes. That's that's all I'll say. I, I we're going to a great game. Yeah. I'm so excited to go to Mona Shores Byron Snyder. That would be an incredible game. But of course, boys, you got to win one more for us. We're going <laughs> to we'll be, be there. there the rest of the way. I promise you. Just win one more, and we're going to be there. Um, 
So yeah, Granville Rockford, we'll give quick thoughts because we weren't there. Um, I think first off, and this is something I kind of asked Coach Stiegel about it, but we're going to talk, you know, this means a lot. Not mm-hmm. just that they beat Rockford, but that they go into Rockford, they beat them in the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. I think Coach Stiegel said that they have, Granville hasn't won at Rockford in like since these kids were born. <laughs> so like... This means something, and it means a lot to go into Rockford. We'll talk about why this performance to me is super and super and heartening, and mm-hmm. and heartening, heartening, whatever you're supposed to say. Okay. Good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that, but just on the surface level, to win a playoff game against Rockford at Rockford in the way they did in that second half, that's a game that didn't go perfect. No. And they won it at Rockford. And it's that's huge for this program, not just this season. Yeah, it really is. I think, you know, going back for the, the years that we've covered this team, that's kind of been the one hurdle that uh, kind of remains to be leapt over to this point. And it was uh, Rockford was always the team kind of standing in the way, whether that was winning the OK Red or whether that's trying to get out of the district round of, of the playoffs. And Granville's had some really good teams over the years. They've come really close, beat them in the regular season. Um but in order to, to beat them and take that next step, you needed to, to beat them in the playoffs yeah. and finally able to do that. And, yeah, I think Coach Stiegel, I'm sure, will admit, too, that there's some mistakes that were made. Things could be cleaned up, no doubt. But the fact that they got that one done, uh, last week we sat here and talked about you just need to see it. You need, mm-hmm. like, there's things that line up on paper that you get some of the guys healthy, you know, different struggles Rockford had that things line up that, hey, maybe this can happen. And we didn't want to be too overconfident mm-hmm. last week in predicting that. But now to actually have seen it, it's on the field. And now this is kind of where you can start to turn some of the momentum in the rivalry where you've got a playoff win on the road. Now you'll start looking forward into next year and you've got guys that have won this game and uh, you hope to stack a few together. I wrote about it in my four downs column, the, the exercising of demons, really, mm-hmm. that happened. To the, I mean, listen, I, I don't want to put it on too big of a pedestal just knowing how good year over year of course Rockford's program is still going to be but you and I I think everyone knows that we're Michigan fans so you and I were at the Michigan Ohio State game in Mm -hmm. 2021 and there's an element of this that potentially feels similar because it's you know kind of the team that had struggled for in this game this had been their boogeyman game for years and years and years you go in you win it your way and just beat them Speaking, let's just talk about how they beat them. The defense won the game. It did. I mean, I know Coach Steele, you know, Coach Steele, you know, alluded to that as well. But it, we can say kind of point blank, the offense had moments, some drives that stalled out, some moments they gave up some bad field position, and the defense said, whatever. And until the end, when there was a short field, they only gave up seven points to a Rockford team that scored forty in three straight weeks. Yeah. And they put up big points against Caledonia. They put up big points against a lot of teams. They they put up more points when they played Hudsonville than they did in this game. Mm-hmm. And Granville in a playoff game at Rockford. A defense that has been maligned by many in the media. Yeah. We've seen it this year, though, the growth. Mm-hmm. They put together what might be their best defensive. Coach Stiegel said it. I'll say it definitively. That's their best defensive performance in four years, this defense. These kids have been, A, they've grown. They've gotten bigger. So many of them are three-year <laughs> guys. But they've, they've come together. They've gotten better throughout this season. They've kind of figured it out. There's been some great schematics changes with allowing guys to play in the right places that you know, they've taken a little bit different approach, I think, from the start to the end of the year in terms of subbing and what they're doing. But, like, the defense, we talk, we know Jaden Terry in this offense in this era, we know they're going to score. But, like, the defense for Granville just stopped a Vanderlaan offensive coordinated yeah. game. Shot, I mean, how much does Coach Zenner <laughs> love that? But, like, they just shut down. This era with maybe the best offensive line Rockford's had in years, they shut them down. And the defense did enough. The defense was the unit that kept them in the game until the offense had a chance to, right. to do enough to win. That's not how I would have planned it to go. But if that is how it went, that's a big flipping deal. <laughs> it sure is. I think, you know, even at the start of the season when uh, it was that tough part of the, the season, season the first three weeks and they're playing these really difficult opponents and they're getting into these shootouts and Mm -hmm. it kind of looked like it was going to be some of the same story where the offense is definitely going to carry the mail a little bit they're going to put up big numbers the defense is kind of just you got to find a stop or two and early on that's kind of what they struggled and you kind of felt like it was going to be the same story over again where if you're going to beat some of the playoff teams that they would likely be facing mainly Rockford Mm -hmm. you're you're going to need to win a shootout and to see the development to where the first couple weeks they're giving up 50 40 points even 30 points to Jenison to now the last couple weeks of the regular season, West Ottawa, three points, Caledonia, 
held them to basically a touchdown until mm-hmm. late in the game with the first unit uh, when is out there. And now to do this against Rockford, I think, fully solidifies that this defense is legit, that they've kind of found some things, you know, whether that's schematically what they're doing or kind of finding the rotation, getting some – different guys out there, uh, some of the guys that are seeing offensive snaps, getting them playing both ways and critical downs and finding that right mix of uh, just of everything. And no doubt uh, credit to Coach Zenner and what he's been able to do in, in getting that unit ready to roll. So, yeah, I think no one probably would have predicted this up until even this week or a couple weeks ago for sure. But uh, to see that kind of finally all come together uh, is huge, no doubt. Yeah. You have – I was just – the, I didn't know. I was downloading some images for later in the show, and they were popping up on okay. the, the graphics for like the later segments were popping up behind <laughs> you making the point. It was a great point, though. Okay, I was so, just going. So, so that, that's why the audience and I were in on that, and you weren't. So that, <laughs> that's what was going on. This is this is again. We don't have a producer, in case you didn't know. And if you didn't know, I'm an awful producer. <laughs> so we learn this every single week. Um, no, I mean it's you can't you can't overstate the fact of how big of a deal is that the defense like is playing truly at this level yeah. like on un- unquestionably we'll talk about it more and then the the thing also is this was a game where the offense struck when needed a couple mm-hmm. touchdowns in that early third thir- or second half you know Jaden with the 73 yard run that kind of put it away and it was it was a mix of grinding drives when needed along with the the quick strike plays but that was it is like the the offense was able when they were called upon to have to strike in a moment where lap the first time around, the offense, I don't want to s- – crumbled isn't the word, but that third quarter, after a dominant first half, the first time around, the offense shut down in that third quarter. It was the opposite this time. Yeah. When it came time to win that game with a three-point game on the line, they stretched the lead to three scores instead. They sure did, I think. you know, And, and of course, anytime you, both units working hand-in-hand or they help each other out, and it, it was a complete reversal of the first yeah. game to where last time the offense starts out hot and, and – kind of falls apart late, unable to hold the lead. The defense starts out good, falls apart at the end, gives up some scores. It was kind of the opposite. It, uh, this time, the right away, the offense stalls out a little bit early on. Rockford goes up 7 nothing, gets a score. You're thinking, here we go again. And mm-hmm. to, to kind of see both units pick it up, the defense gets off the field, suddenly the offense picks it up. And, yeah, it wasn't a lot right away, just 10 points at the half. But, I mean, against a team like Rockford, they kept grinding. They didn't turn it over, held on to the football, and uh, – able to finally put some big drives together. You know, when you've got the playmakers that they do, we've seen it all season long, you give them enough opportunities, they're going to figure it out, even against the Rockford team that historically really shuts them down. But you put the defense getting that many stops out there, the offense gets that many more chances, and uh, it kind of goes, it works hand in hand, and you saw it on Friday night. Oh, it's, again, it's unfortunate that we weren't there, and it's unfortunate it's a playoff show because, like, or it's a, it's a packed playoff show because otherwise, I mean, we could go, especially if we were there, we would probably break down every game. I don't know. There might be some off-season content if we can find an NFHS broadcast. There might be – we might just call it for the yeah. first time seeing it. We might put out our own – this this week, and if they win, especially this week, maybe we're going to have to go ahead and just <laughs> during the week just sit in front of an yeah. NFHS screen and call it because we actually haven't seen it yet, so like we just True. listened to it. So, yeah, we'll see. So, yeah, that's, that's Granville Rockford first off. There's a lot more to get to on, on that, and there's mostly a lot more that we'll be able to get to when we preview Granville Hudson, which we're going to do in a second here. Uh, so we were at Unity Hamilton. Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> uh, no. Um, I think Unity's... <laughs> no thoughts? <laughs> my main takeaway is Unity's really, really good, Gosh. I think, and Hamilton maybe wasn't fully ready for that. I don't know if there was much they could do either. I don't know That's if there's kinda... anyone to be ready for it. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I think that Unity team is exactly what they were all regular season long. It looks like I think I'm feeling pretty good about that pick um, for oh, them. Yeah. Them winning the the state title there. I think it's the only thing I would change is I I do think like um, Harper Woods is probably the team that winds up giving them the most. I, I think they probably meet Harper Woods in the championship game is probably more to what I would kind of change my opinion to. Here's my speaking of the four downs column. So normally I write like three, four, five plus paragraphs on, on everything. This is, this was my this was my column on Unity Christian. <laughs> I wrote a little bit more later, but yep, that's about that's all you have accurate. to say. I <laughs> like I. They're so good, and the thing, the thing that makes them incredible. And again, Hamilton, that's not like a five and four team that played a poor schedule. Or a six and three team that played a really poor schedule, didn't beat anyone, didn't play anyone good, didn't play competitively with anyone. That's a good team. That's a physical team mm-hmm. that should be able to match up with them. And 
it was essentially tied. It was 8-6 at almost the end of the first quarter. Yeah. And then they won the second quarter 41 to nothing. <laughs> and it was because it's this combination of the d- the offense is good. The offense is not as good as the 2021 no. team. I also don't think they're I think the offense could be closer to the 2020. I don't think they're trying to be that. No. They're trying to be slower. They're trying to, you know, they and they aren't they aren't as fast. They that team, gosh, the I mean, Rapoon and the Chicks, that team was just stupid. <laughs> but what's makes this team different than that team is the defense because mm-hmm. the X factor we talked about it through the game with Unity is it wasn't just that the offense was straight cuz you know that offense is going to go they're going to get a first down every two plays and they'll break a chunk for 15 and you know th- that's just how quickly they're going to score. Yep. But it's when you start at the 50 every time because you're just winning that field position battle time and time again, that's when you flip the football game because did they start outside of the after the touchdown, did they start inside their own 40 once? I don't think so. <laughs> like they're ridiculous, man. They're yeah. so good. I know Portland's good. I know, I mean, we're, we'll we'll get to it later when we make picks. This is healthy. Mm-hmm. It won't be a forty point game this time or thirty, whatever it was last time. But I, I don't know, man. There's I don't have many thoughts on it. There's this team. I, if this team play, here's here's a talking point. Then we'll be, we'll jump off unity. Okay. This team plays the twenty twenty one team. Who wins? That's a good question. It's a I, real good question because that team dropped 70. I mean, even the game they lost, they dropped functionally. Six, they were going to drop 65 points if they continued. Right. If they didn't have injuries and stuff. Like, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of something that will be determined, I think, a little bit by these next couple yeah. games for sure. But, yeah, I think it, it matches up really well because, as you kind of stated, the, the one thing that Unity team from the championship game didn't have was the defense that this Unity team does have. And the defense was still great on that It was team, still good, but, yeah. yeah. But I think the, the difference – and how much more physical and the the players that this defense has is what's really going to carry them even more. I, I think you hinted at too that this offense probably has another gear yet that we haven't fully yeah. seen. I think we saw it at points. You still see a little up tempo. I think Coach Tibby, of course, has that waiting yet for if the, it gets to a matchup where they're not just dropping sixty points on fifty yard drives every single time that they can kind of go to that. And, and I think some of that is still there for them to be even more explosive. But I think. The, the thing that sets them apart from maybe that team is their ability to have fantastic field position every time because of how stout that defense is. Yeah, I think, and it, it's not a great matchup because it's like it's such a unique system. Like if you're talking about them actually playing head-to-head because it's right. not like two like normal systems playing each other where it's almost like two normal teams, it's the same thing. And I think matchups-wise, you probably take the team that has a little bit, in some ways, stouter line. I don't know, though. That... That team did score the most points in the history of Michigan high school football, though. Yeah. That's what does, like, stop <laughs> me a little bit is it's like the only thing that stopped them. I mean, we can talk a lot about There's a lot of things to break down from that game. There's been so many posts more years. Than done on it, and I still have, like, they were so banged up. Rapoon was completely out that game. Both Chandlers were nicked. Mm-hmm. I think we found out after the game that, which, which one was Cam Chandler, the quarterback? Yep. Yeah, I think we found out after the fact that he was more banged up than we even thought. Like it, I, I injuries is what happened in that second half. Now, also, I think they probably could have kneeled the ball for two quarters and won it, but that's neither here nor there. They just didn't need to fumble it. Right? But no, that I don't know, man. That's a gr- that's a great question. We could probably spend an hour <laughs> just on position that by down. position breaking down <laughs> Unity twenty one versus. And again, if this year's team wins a state championship, like that's kind of going to be your point. This team has a tougher path than that team in the championship. I think. I think you know. You look at. I mean, they dropped. They dropped seventy points in every game. Just no, because they had the snow game involved there. They dropped at yeah. least sixty points in every game. Obviously, they dropped seventy seven in that one game, almost 80 in that That's one right. game against Grand Rapids <laughs> Christian in, d- in the district championship. So uh, it'll be a much tougher path, I think, for them this year than the, the 21 team had. And the state championship game may honestly be tougher in some ways, too, I mm-hmm. mean, based on who they have to play there. So that's uh, that's certainly going to be interesting uh, to see. Let's, uh, let's take one more quick break, and when we come back, uh, we'll transition to our preview, looking at our game, Granville-Hudsonville, 
and uh, of course taking a look around the area, making some picks around the West Michigan area and beyond. Gear up this season with the MGN Shop. Featuring everything from t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats and outerwear, to water bottles, stickers and other accessories that help show off your style and your support of Game Night, the Granville Bulldogs and more to shop. Click on the Shop Merch tab at the top of MichiganGameNight.com and browse nearly 50 items. And be sure to check in frequently as new items are added throughout the season. That's the MGN Shop through MichiganGameNight.com. All right, welcome back. Nathan Chandler here on the MGN Drive to Detroit show. As we have scrapped Ford Field from our lexicon to try to avoid getting sued but then in turn whatever idiot makes our graphics decided to put in uh the lion's font i shouldn't say it. that's not the lion's font that's no, not no it's and wayne it's... something or other okay and it's definitely not everywhere no so okay. we're not it's not the lion's font so the ford family that is not the lion's font perfect got that cleared up got that cleared up okay they got bigger fish to fry i hope right now. i would I think hope. so i mean you never know you never know. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, Greenville, Hudsonville. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Tisha Championship. We will not be there. Um, as far as I know, maybe we can, like, I'm going to, like, suggest, like, kidnapping or something. But, like. <laughs> that's too far? That's too far. Okay. <laughs> uh, we will not be there. So. This game, though, what, what set it up, thousand foot view. Um, it is, to me. A very different matchup than last time. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I think Coach Stiegel said in the interview, was interesting, he said, like, I actually think the, the defense, giving up 35, I thought it was one of our better games of the year. You know, I think the, the offense with some turnovers, some things put the, the defense in a bad position and that the offense is the, the unit that needs to play better. Well, the defense also is playing a lot better. The offense has, you know, they're, they're healthy across the offensive line between Jay and, you know, a couple other guys that were nicked up that are better. Like, it definitely feels like, you know, it, it, it feels like a game that just has a different vibe. Again, one team needed a fire drill field goal to knock off East Kent with the other just slayed their ultimate boogeyman. Mm-hmm. So there is a different vibe coming into this game that I think Hudsonville is still the favorite. Yeah. But I don't think it's as, it's way closer to a coin flip than what you would maybe think the, this game should be. And also there's... You almost can flip the boogeyman element because now Granville has been the team that has, except for this one matchup, they have been the team that's beaten them every time since 2020 minus the last time they played. So it's it's a different feeling matchup for sure than the last time. Yeah, no, it sure is. I think, you know, there's definitely something to the momentum of the Bulldogs now have, have beaten Rockford, and I think this is kind of where the, the motivational side of it is. You, you, obviously, that means something. We just got done talking about how, how big of a win that is, but if you're the coaching staff and everyone, you're kind of like saying – in order for that to mean something, we need to right. win, we need to win this one now. <laughs> this yes. is the, the Rockford win means nothing if you don't win this one, and um, I don't know if that's fully true, but at the same time, that's what you need to think going into it. And so, I think there's definitely some optimism, at least uh, from where we sit, that this is a team that they've beaten in the past. This is a team that, yeah, has given them some really tough games, and they've gone back and forth. We are but... never optimistic about Granville, of course. <laughs> no, and definitely not over the top ever at any point. But no, I think there's some optimism that this is a team that they can beat. They feel like that uh, of course it's gonna be a tough game of course uh, Hudsonville is the favorite going into it and they've already beat him once this season but uh definitely there's got to be a little bit of confidence coming off that Rockford win carrying that momentum over a team that you feel like you know how to beat and I believe it was was a Gibby Connolly the, the interview after after the week of yes. the Hudsonville yeah, game yeah. That, that right away was saying there's kind of some things we learned about going into this mm-hmm. one I kind of knew this was potentially a rematch down the road so i mean uh, of course hudsonville's won nine games in a row as well so they i mean they feel confident yeah it wasn't a perfect game for them against east kentwood either but a hudsonville team that that also i mean is obviously on a roll too so and a hudsonville team hearing from kind of a couple different people about them i don't know if and this is actually this is a pro to hudsonville i don't think they've felt like they've played their best the Mm -hmm. last few weeks and they still have been beating good teams not playing their best so there's good and bad to that. You know, there's Granville is playing their best and they're winning, but then Hudsonville isn't playing their best and they're <laughs> sneaking by, but like last week, but even not sticking by in other weeks and winning big. So that's that's something to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, I also East Kentwood continues to get a lot better as this year goes. I mean, we all know East Kentwood is gonna be 
a problem yeah. sooner rather than later, especially because I think I think Coach Spencer is going to have some some dudes come. You know what? <laughs> I think the the Kurt Signetti uh, strategy of bringing some dudes in and you know saying Google me, you know Google <laughs> Ty Spencer because you'll find out what he's done. Um, Ek was such a sleeping giant. That's going to be they're going to be a problem. They're going to be a mm-hmm. problem. Like a Rockford even has to deal with problems. Right. I think one of the things, though, that's going to obviously come in, this is a game that will a 1,000% be won in the trenches and at the linebacking core because mm-hmm. both teams want to run the ball. Coach Stiegel, you know, described that offense that they run as almost a little bit of like a wing T from the shotgun type offense. We'll talk about that with um, with Byron Center um, as well a little bit later. And, of course, Granville, ru- Granville runs the power T despite some of you kids on the Granville team this year keep calling it the wing. I forgot to bring it up. Here we go, Ed. This was just a matter of time. Some of you Granville kids keep calling it the wing T. A couple of you on the interviews. I didn't, I didn't fix you then, but it's not a wing T. Wing T is a different formation. You all know that. Yeah. It's power T. It's the Michigan power T. Two tight ends, three backs, all behind the quarterback in full house alignment. No one on the wing. That would make it a wing T. <laughs> This is history time with Nate, and a little <laughs> bit different subject this week. We learned about dreadnoughts last week and yeah. in, in World War One battleships. This week we're learning about football, old school football offenses that are only run in the state of Michigan. Yeah, these are both things that I've heard off air multiple times. So I've been every time that it comes up the wing tee, then I get it gets directed at me. So now just everybody else is getting in on the amount. The amount of times that if you see someone like a scout that's at a Granville game or something, tweet about how well someone's running a wing T offense. Chandler is getting it sent to him. Yeah. <laughs> Half the time, probably getting sent to him from the MGN account. Uh-huh. Just, oh, Michigan game. Oh, Nate's mad about someone calling it the wing T again. <laughs> yep. At some point in time, if everyone calls it one thing, that's just what it's going to become. Right. That's my problem is it's like essentially wing T has become synonymous. I don't know what we were talking about. Wing T has just kind of come become synonymous with running a full house offense yeah. at this point in time and i understand that's just kind of what it's become because you know that people call wing t style offense if you're running a flex bone or like a whatever it's almost just like it's almost like it's become like running a spread you run a wing t offense mm-hmm. if you run a full house or whatever so i understand it from that perspective but that's the spe- the specific specificity <laughs> i think that's how you say that, that word. right grand valley state education <laughs> What were we talking about? Oh, we have to stop the run. Both teams want to run the ball. Both teams stop the run. Well, go. Yeah. No, I think... Uh, Please uh, save us. A Hudsonville team that, I mean, we've talked about in kind of their last preview of this game is they've always been, at their best, they've been a, a physical team that mm-hmm. they'll run the spread, but they're, they're power spread, and they've got guys that uh, are physical backs. They're willing to run some tight ends that, that'll block, but also our threats in the passing game. And I think, yeah, they, they, the first time around, they, they made some plays in the passing game. and But at their core, they're going to want to run the ball. And I think, you know, kind of get to, to get into what the Bulldogs did last week is they, they took Rockford out of some of those yeah. running situations. They've got uh, put tremendous running back and kind of took the running game out of it a little bit. Got the lead, forced them to pass the ball, a young quarterback, blah, blah, blah. We can break that game down more. We're past that. Either way, they they <laughs> took they took them took them out of the run game. And I think that you kind of got to do that again against this Hudsonville team where if you can control the trenches on the offensive side, of course they're going to run the ball a lot, always do. If they can open that up and then force Hudsonville to play from behind or from a deficit and get them out of the run game a little bit. That's uh, that's going to be the battle. Well, there are a lot of similarities between beating this Hudsonville team and beating that that Rockford team. I think it's fair to talk about, like, oh, they conquered Rockford, so now they can do it or need to do the same things against, you know, against um, Hudsonville. I, I think the main thing about Hudsonville is I believe they found their identity, and I think they actually found their identity in that playoff game last year. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's when a light kind of switched for this group of what they wanted to be you know I think Van Lake is being moved around as an athlete more not necessarily just quarterback Griffin Baker settled in his role running the ball you know essentially like I said wing tee from the shotgun a lot of times like coach Steagle said a couple tight ends or at least power spread a um, couple very good running backs you know a thunder and lightning combination in, in the backfield that they have um long way of saying I don't think we're going to see a swinging gate on third and one no <laughs> probably not that's probably the one thing I don't I think they have uh figured out what they are quite yeah. a bit i think if there's a third and one this year or third and whatever it was third and whatever i think they're probably going to line up with two tight ends and smash you again with mm-hmm. bryce fox in that situation mm-hmm. this year um here's a 
prediction. I'm not going to pick the score of the game, but whoever wins the turnover margin wins the game. Yeah. I think is that probably that's, fair to say? I think that's fair, yeah. I mean, you, you saw it in the Rockford game, and it's kind of the thing for the the Bulldogs specifically that all season long right, they had some issues with some turnovers, and you start looking at those games against some tremendous teams early in the season. They turn the ball over. They lose by one possession. It's pretty easy to tie that back to you hold on to the football, you got a chance to score, and the game's different. You're, you're on the other end of that one possession game. And last week against Rockford, didn't turn it over, able to get up a couple scores and, and hold on to a couple score lead. And Hudsonville, very much the same type of team where if they're going to try to run the ball and, and control it and not uh, turn it into too much of a track meet style of game where, yeah, if they can avoid the turnovers, they're not giving the Bulldogs a short field, it, it works both ways. That uh, Whoever wins this turnover battle, a uh, huge part in winning the game. And kind of off of that, when you're talking about getting aggressive, um, the combination of breaking breaking a big play, which Granville can do in multiple different ways, as can Hudsonville, but you know they're more so going to be breaking because of the pass game, and the impact of the pass game for both teams. Because I think at some point in time, both teams, and again, Hudsonville is more apt to throw the ball, but I bet you at some point in time, even though they, these teams would, perfect game plan, both these teams don't have to throw the ball once. Mm-hmm. At some point in time, I believe a pass play will change the course of this football game. Yeah. One way or the other. Right. And it might be a pick. I mean, <laughs> I'm listen, I'm not an Ohio State guy. I subscribe to Woody Hayes' theory on the pass game of, you know, when you when you throw the ball, you know, mostly bad things can happen. Or two out of three, whatever the, the quote is. I don't mm-hmm. really care for his quote. He hit a kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, one way or another, there will be here's our other prediction for the game. Turnover margin wins there will be a pass play that changes the course of this football game. Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, for the Bulldogs, going back a, a few years, it's been when they kind of unlock some of those unique pass plays that uh, they typically don't use, it's kind of what opened the game up a little bit, allowed them to continue some drives that looked like they were maybe going to be stalling out where they can hit some different variations of the pass game. And it's kind of, uh, you know, it's where I wish we had been at the game last week a little bit to see kind of exactly the the different things that were used. But, you know, Coach Stiegel's always got some of those pass plays that he's saved throughout the season that are, are used in a situation like this where you're seeing a team a second time, whether that's, you know, just some of those base plays where you're looking for the tight ends and the play action or you start to get some of the different backs involved and being able to get them the football. But I think Hudsonville, the team, as you mentioned, that is a little bit more prone to throwing the ball. They made some big plays in the passing game the first time. Um, the passing game is naturally more of their style of offense. So they're probably going to have more opportunities and mm-hmm. more shots at making that play. But, uh, yeah, it's all about the timing and who's able to find it when they really need it. Yeah, and also if they're looking to do it more, that opens up the opportunity. Does Josh Crater or whoever yeah. else get, you know, get, a, get a pick that maybe the big play is a negative big, you know, right. big play? Um, no. Or, wait, as Coach Stiegel, as I said with him at the end of the interview, Granville running a four wide spread, throwing the ball around. Yes, that's right. So that we have back to make sure. Week. Yes, that's back this week. <laughs> as it was, as it was here for that Rockford game or wherever we promoted it last. Uh-huh. It's back this week, apparently. Okay. Keep that in mind. So Hudsonville, you're prepping for the four wide mm-hmm. spread. This show has lost any integrity <laughs> as I sit here saying this, wearing this shirt. Yeah. What is this? this is the top selling shirt by a mile in the history of our shop, mm-hmm. and top-selling shirt in general in terms of non-MGN versions of the shirt. Most plagiarized. <laughs> Most plagiarized shirt. <laughs> no, I don't care. It's, I mean, if you if the school or the team was able to come up with a higher quality one than our, our one-off printed ones from Teespring, that's whatever. I'll just, I just want credit that I came up with this. I want team at Ford. I'm, I should wear this to Ford Field if they make it. Yeah, you have to. Uh, I don't know if I will. <laughs> we'll become that guy like the one you're at uh the Breslin were you there when that team from the up won for like def i think it was that two years ago when we were doing the muskegon game the team yeah. from the, and like the one guy like jumped on the court to celebrate with the team from like the radio row or <laughs> yeah. whatever that was funny that would be me able to jump from the top row of yeah. field down there in a rappel down <laughs> yeah you're getting down there somehow <laughs> <laughs> it might hurt but oh, you're right <laughs> so that's Granville Hudsonville. We're getting way ahead of ourselves, but uh, you know, good luck to the team. Mm-hmm. Here's where we're at. This is a great game. We're gonna be outside. We're gonna be on top of the press box. It's not gonna rain, thankfully. Hopefully, um, hopefully, <laughs> good word to use. <laughs> yeah. um, it is gonna be. Have you seen the weather? It's a not. low of 39. Oh, perfect. 
Okay. So, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Uh, what a game. 14-12, though, the first time they played. Um, I expect the same. Two teams again. Mm-hmm. Powerful ski gun attack with power spread. They do a little bit of everything, a little bit of that kind of wing tee from the gun with Alaska as a wing mixed in for Byron Center. I mean, it's... It was 14-12 last time. I would not be surprised if it's almost the exact same or maybe even lower scoring this time in a lot of ways. These teams are going to pound on each other. It's going to be, I was telling you before, this is going to be a very high-level football game that might look sloppy and low scoring because they both play in the trenches at such a high level that I think it might wind up looking like a kind of stymied slugfest, even though it's being played at a really high schematic level. Right. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, when you look at some of the all conference players from the regular season and the offenses for both of these teams get a lot of attention, they've got some stars on the offense, offensive side of the ball, but yeah, you look at that first matchup and, and just how, uh, how big the defenses were for both teams and they don't get as much of the attention uh, as they probably deserve. But uh, two teams that are really physical can, as you mentioned, control the defensive line in the trenches, got some tremendous linebackers, the secondaries that can hold up against solid passing attacks from either side. And there's no doubt that uh, in a tight game like this and a district championship style of game where these two teams already really slugged it out defensively. One time we could see the exact same game being played out again. Yeah. And I was going to say, I was, I was about to say, um, arguably the top quarterback game in the state, but actually not arguably because Bryce Underwood and whatever the younger car at Celine are, that's right. are playing. So not quite, <laughs> um, but a former future Michigan quarterback, Bryce Underwood, yep. will say on the show for a second straight week, but the quarterback battle three year plus starters, Tungate was up as a, as a freshman. They do it differently. I mean, you can kind of break that down, but this is a this is as good of a quarterback game for sure as we're going to see in West Michigan with Pittman. What he does as a thrower and a physical runner, then Tungate as a run at 15, 20 times a game right. runner and also a passer. Yeah, both guys that are extremely effective and have been tremendous playmakers for years. Uh, I think Tungate, uh, a guy that is just uh, really dynamic with his legs and, of course, has some receivers and they throw the ball quite a bit as well, but his ability in the run game whether that's designed runs or whether it's on those designed rollouts where he's going left or right and it's it's not an RPO by the typical definition of it, but it's essentially he's rolling out, there's routes down the field, and if the coverage isn't there, they're playing man, whatever, he can take off and run, and he mm-hmm. just makes these big plays. and So I think he's probably more of the threat with his legs, of course, still does a lot through the air as well, but Pittman, a guy that's just a stockier quarterback, a guy that's going to stand in the pocket, has a big arm, can deliver the ball mm-hmm. down the field, but then also can run it a little bit. He won't be as featured as much in the run game, but when he does, he can run people over. And uh, both uh, just really effective in, in racking up yardage for their team. And, and Coach Koziak's talked about that with Pittman. Is he really the number one thing he worked on in the off season was being physical, running the football, and 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 you know he it creates. Let's talk about it. A duo of po- physical runners in both these teams. Physical. The the way that. Byron Center uses their team has changed. Luke Laska, who another one of these four-year players, I think, and I think I heard if it, if it weren't for Isaac Lee being injured his freshman year, he probably would have been a four-year guy mm-hmm. too. But Laska, four-year guy as well up on varsity, primarily linebacker, of course, and leading the defense, but he's been a running back, just a straight running back. He's moved more to wing and being a, a halfback or a wing back out of this, again, shotgun wing T sort of, uh, you know, sort of attack that will get him involved coming from from the wing in, in some things. And he's got the the Payne brothers of Cam and Kellen that have kind of taken that role now more as just big physical runners. On the other side, Tamarion Ike Stewart for Mona Shores. Big physical runner. So when you normally think about these teams in the past, you think about maybe quicker running backs, maybe less so by in center, but at least Mona Shores out of the ski gun. Quick running backs like what they have always had with, with the slots and whatever. The, the backfields itself are as physical as I can ever remember for these two teams matching up now against each other with how they've you know mixed things this year. Yeah, they really have a tremendous balance, and it's a lot of what makes their offenses both so talented and, and so effective is that for Byron Center, you've got those power guys, a, a rotation, a depth of guys that right there can, can complement Tongue Gate pretty well, where you've got the, the speed quarterback, a guy that can make some big plays and stretch the field in the run game. 
you've got some powerful guys in that backfield that add an element of physicality to it and can be those tough yardage type guys. And, and then on the Mona Shore side of things where you've got a quarterback that's the more physical guy and, and can run the ball a little bit, but you've also now got in Stewart a, a featured back, a guy that you can give the ball to quite a bit, and he can kind of take a game over if you give him multiple touches, of course, a physical back as well. So I think uh, they use them a little bit differently in, in what they're asked to do, but they complement each other's quarterbacks really well. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much more to to get into as well uh, in in this one, but it's going to be a great one. Of course, tune in both these games on michigansportsradio.com. Our game starts at 6.30. It's also going to be on our YouTube page. Um, so michigansportsradio.com and the, the MSR app. You can find both games. I think the other broadcast is starting at 6.45. I believe they're going on there. They might change that time that uh, Kelly and Ron are going on as well with the Hudsonville game. So if you can't make it, um, I feel like all of Granville is going to be there. So I feel yeah. like... I feel like whatever. So, um, so yeah. And hopefully we'll be back here next week talking about prepping for, uh, it might be T versus T next week. Maybe. I mean, I know Howell has got a tough one with Oxford. He looked really good last week. But, like, can you imagine a D1 regional game, T versus T? Like, who does, especially a team that went three and six plus Granville last week? Huh? Yeah, we would need to be there covering. I mean, that's, that's our game. It is our game. Yeah. I don't think, is there anyone... There's no one in the state of Michigan that has done as much T football the last seven years as us. I can't. I can't. I think there are T coaches that have watched less T football games than <laughs> us. Than between Granville, Unity Christian, and Zion West, that's all. Have we done a non-T game this year? Yeah. Um, no. No, I don't think we have. I think it's no. Yes. Uh, Hamilton Spring Lake. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> that was Flexbone. That was so. Flexbone. <laughs> yep. Not Regardless. Watch. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's just move, uh, right into it here. We've taken enough breaks on the show and this is going to be a very long, I knew it. I mean, we knew it was going to be a long show. There was a lot to talk about today. Um, let's get into just a quick look around the area. And I do have snooze to you.com that we can bring up a little bit. We'll make some picks of some of the games that we haven't talked about yet and look at some things. Um, First off here, you have uh, Hudsonville and Granville, of course, talk about that. So then, you know, this is the rest of where things are at. Howell, Brighton, sorry, Brighton, not Oxford. They're, they're okay. playing Oxford's on the other side of the draw, which, again, this team does loom in here. Clarkston, of course. Um, so that's that's how it's setting up in D1. But again, you know, kind of the favorite there, Howell. You know, we'll see. It's in, Brighton played a great game last week. They're good. But, again, T versus T certainly is a... Uh, an interesting talking point, to, to say the least, with the way that, that D1 works out there. And I think regardless, it's going to be interesting for Granville or Hudsonville because, A, you get T versus T, but then Hudsonville's in a great position because if they win and it is Howell, well, they've already lost to Howell, but, so n- never mind on this point, <laughs> but my point was going to be how great is it that they get to see a T team. They know more about stopping T teams than most have, but guess what? The only game Hudsonville's lost. So I was setting you up for a point. If yes. you want to take it, you may, <laughs> okay. but the point has been undercut. Yeah, no, I think you're on the right track there. I think I follow where you were going with it. It was one of Howell's closest games of the season. It was week one, so, I mean, a sure. lot has changed since then. But, yeah, 20-17 to 17 game. If it's Hudsonville, they get a rematch at their only loss and, and a close one there. And if it's Granville, it's it's T on T. And Bulldogs have to feel like if there's anyone that knows the T and, and can, is prepared to stop it, it's them in D1. So I, There's one team way. that has Jaden Terry, and the other one doesn't. That's, That's exactly a little right. bit of the X factor if you got that. Um, Division two so obviously lined up Mona Shores Byron Center our game and then you know other side Porter to Central Matt again I I think the number one thing I'm looking at obviously we know Dexter's good East Lansing is obviously very good we we know that but I do think things line up a little bit this this might be a game that determine, determines who goes to Ford Field this weekend that we got yeah I think so I think it's kind of what we had talked about when we made our, our picks earlier is uh, this is a big one early on in this trick championship whoever wins this one uh, is set up really well to go on a pretty deep run. Division three, let's uh, we can make some picks in this one. Dewitt, I think, beats Lowell. I, I think Lowell's a good team, but uh, Dewitt is a monster this season. So really, St. Joe, Zealand West. I would say we both, well, we both picked Zealand West for the championship. <laughs> but regardless, I think you know they're the favorite. So really, the most the most interesting game here to me is Coopersville Forest Hill Central. So Forest Hill Central plays a seven nothing game against EGR last week. I think Forest Hill Central, obviously the the favorite. They're the one seed in this one. I'll say it, though. I love the pass game. 
um, with Bo Harris and Brooks Haddon that could be an X factor if this was a grinded out type of game. I actually think Coopersville is going to win this one really? over FHC. Okay. Yeah, when I was uh, filling out my brackets uh, a week ago, I, I had uh, Forest Hill Central winning this one. I think I think it should be a really good game. I think uh, the Coopersville has been a, a really physical team and mm. and can can grind it out as well as anyone. So if we get a, another similar game to what FHC and EGR just played, could be a really good one there. But I, I think I'm sticking with Forest Hill Central. I mean, I think it's I think it'll be really close. And I so, so JJ heard us for the lineman at offense or stud lineman at uh coopersville he just decommitted from western so i don't know if that's a western related thing more so i think a couple guys kind of drop from there or if it's a i have power four offer or something mm-hmm. i mean if you remember gabe van sickle did something similar committing very late to um ohio state i think he got his what, what do they do they do that stripe but i mean again i go from the kid, great west michigan kid but you know like whatever <laughs> he got the stripes or whatever taken off his the black, whatever they do, that the black stripes, you can't play until then. It's their okay. form of a red shirt, but he still is red shirting. Or yep. they have, they've got weird traditions down there. I like losing to Michigan every year for the last right. three years. <laughs> uh, you can't even see us talking about this because I already have the next game up on screen. This is the one I think I want to talk about for the longest of the segment. Unity Christian, South Christian. So my question to you is, obvi- I think we both think Unity wins. I think. I think. Okay. Uh, we, I, I think Unity I, wins. Yeah, I mean, I think Unity wins as well. I think we'll break it okay. down. Okay. Why the, they're the slight concern potentially, but right. So Carson Viss is back. It, the fact that Viss they lose these four games in a row, and then I found out later that it sounds like Viss was not 100 percent healthy and moving correctly, and now he's moving well and they're winning games again. It puts something in there because it if there's one team from the area that can maybe extend plays, do enough to beat pressure, do something over the top to score points with you, if score points with Unity, it might be a healthy Carson Viss led South Christian. That's the only reason why this game gives me a little bit of pause. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, for the way it was looking there for a little bit for South Christian, you kind of assumed they were down and out a little bit and this Unity team would, would roll them a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's so hard to, to bet against a healthy Carson Viss. And after what we've seen him do the last couple of years and going into the season, he was one of my picks, uh, South Christian as a team, and, and him leading the way were – prediction to be back at Ford Field and yeah. things have changed a little bit since then and they're gonna they have to be your team of the year right I, I think I think they were yeah I'd have to look back to see I know I was pretty high on them just uh visions of that state championship game mm-hmm. from a year ago where he just went crazy and so it's kind of that's always in the back of your mind is that if he does something like that if he's you know the the brightest star on the field that day and, and he do, just goes crazy and, and makes some plays this is kind of where you know what we talked about earlier with the unity team is is figuring out how good that defense is yes is, if if they're holding Carson Viss in check and and they keep him, he doesn't rush for many yards. The passing game doesn't really get going. That's where I think the unity you start talking about this is an all time great defense for yeah. them. And that's the, I think we know how good the linebackers in the front. You know, I think the front seven, front eight in general. I think we know how good they are. For me, the question was they look great against Hamilton. Mm-hmm. How good is that secondary? Right. In I tend to believe that secondary is that good. Right. But that's what we're kind of yet to have to, to learn, I think, um, a little bit um, exactly. On to Division 5, um, West Catholic, Catholic Central. West Catholic, the favorite to win this game. I think we both certainly would say that. Um, but you got to beat the reigning champs to, mm-hmm. to get to be the champs. I think... Like other divisions, again, Frankenmuth hanging out in there is really good. They're playing Belding. Um, I think this is another win this game, go to the state championship type of type of game, maybe be a state champ. I mean, last year this was essentially the state championship game, and it even with the way that Central or Catholic Central has struggled a little bit, it might be a little bit of that again. Yeah, I think so. I think just how many state championships between the two of these yeah. programs and just so much history there that uh, – yeah, this was one where we're picking the bracket as well. I think I felt good about West Catholic. Uh, the path kind of clears up a little bit once they get past Catholic Central, and, and felt good about them winning the championship from there. It's just yeah, it's you got to get past them by most accounts. It's a 
Catholic Central team that's down a little bit this year from compared to what their standard has been the last couple of years. But it, it's also hard a team that's won that much in the past. Hard to bet against them uh, in a setting like this. Yeah, and and by the way, we have uh, I forgot to say we got snooze to you dot com. He's got the playoff bracket as well. It's one of the easiest to operate playoff bracket, so I want to make sure I shout it out what we're using. Lastly, D6. Don't have a ton to talk about. Just most want to talk about this is actually a really good game. Couple conference rivals, but um, uh, Ralph Munger's still coaching. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. Where did he coach before? He, uh, Frankenmuth. Okay. Yeah, Frankenmuth. That's and then, what it was. Uh, I don't know where he was before that, but and then he wasn't there anymore, and I wonder if the team he used to be at is still playing while he's still going. They must be. They I would think. Be. You wouldn't you wouldn't go with a younger coaching group to get rid of Ralph Munger, and he's still playing, right? I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to look into so, that. So, Nuego a chance to win a district champ, which is, I mean, that is really cool for, for Ralph to go in and kind of show. We've talked about it already. Like, he's kind of coming and going to do it his way. And at that level of the sport, you certainly can, you know, in, in down in D6, where you only, you only got 30, 35 kids on a roster, and you have to have every single kid able to play a role. It's been kind of cool to, to watch the, the progression there at, at Nuego over the last couple of years as they've exponentially gotten um, a lot better here. That'll wrap it up. This is a pretty long show, for sure. <laughs> I don't even know how long it went. This is well over an hour. I know that much, though, I think. Um, Nate Dreyer, Chandler Timmer, 6.30 on our YouTube as well as on Michigan Sports Radio's w- app and website. We will be Byron Center, Mona Shores from Mona Shores. Incredible game on the Lake Shore, of course, Granville. Hudsonville on Michigan Sports Radio and eight other games I think we have again this week and you know including South and, and Unity and, and West Catholic and Catholics I, if we just talked about a big game literally all of them we just talked about are on Michigan Sports True. Radio so we have every game covered uh, on MSR so make sure you check all those out thank you for tuning in thanks again to Coach Stiegel for uh, coming on and ra- wrapping it up and hopefully we're talking to Coach Stiegel again uh, about a win next week uh, so best of luck to the Bulldogs in that one and maybe we'll be able to full, turn into full kind of Homer broadcasters for for a playoff run coming up because boy that would be a lot of fun um, if the dogs can uh, can get it done. Mm-hmm. Thanks for tuning in as always. See you all next time.